I am, by all intents, purposes of the word, a patriot. But my version of patriotism might be different than what the actual technical, logical aspect of the term means. I'm not a walking dictionary. I've never been one. And my education comes more from film and more from reading good books than anything in this lifetime. My father, my late father, was a great proponent of teaching me one thing that people mainly learn from three ways. And he often would say that to me, and I valued what he said. It stayed with me like many things that my mom might have said. But the truth is that what he said was we learn from academics and books, that type of education, certification. We learn from other people's experiences through the elation and the storytelling that they do about their lives and about their livelihood. And we can learn a lot too through that but at the same time we also learn from our own experiences and sometimes those experiences are bloody painful for us but other times they celebrate us you see how we go in life is what we train ourselves in by the time we're 15 or 16 we're sort of on our own path because by that time parents are done parenting to a point and they simply give us the basics, the rules, the guidelines of the house, the house rules, whatever they might be called, and what our, their expectations of us are. But our responsibilities in school, our abilities to learn, all those things did come from what they did for us and what our siblings might have offered us or helped us with if we had, in general, good relationships. But over the course of time, those relationships can fall apart. And they fall apart mainly because people have not put God first in their life. And they fall apart because some people feel that their version of God is more important than someone else's version of God. And the reality is that's an arrogance that is out of control across America. There's many versions of God is somewhat truthful because of the way that God split the continent and gave us all these different nations with all these different peoples and all these different cultures and all these different languages and all these different social nuances and all these different socially appropriate and socially inappropriate type of behavior. If you want to learn more about the world, then you can pick up some books that are pretty good and pretty fast reading and great bathroom material that you, when you're in the business of being on the throne, that you can read a couple pages each day and learn something about the world. Whether or not the world has already changed from that, it doesn't really matter. The general premise of them is pretty solid and pretty sound, I've learned so far. That you can pick up the book, Kiss, Bow, and Shake Hands from different aspects of the world and read about a whole bunch of different countries in quick synopsis. And those books were written mainly for international travelers, international business people, and people who like to go touring and traveling in their life and have created a life and lifestyle through their own efforts, their own education to do that. But that's just one title. There's plenty more out there. I definitely became a connoisseur of books on Japan. When I live there, I have thousands of dollars of books that are hard to replace and difficult to let go of. But at some point, I had to make some of those choices. But I had people in a storage unit who managed the place who kept stealing my work, going in and out of my storage unit without my permission, without my consent, and they looked like a jerk because they kept saying things about things I'd never shown them in my storage unit and never, ever offered them to look and peer at. I also would find many of my boxes totally pilfered through a lot of my electronics missing all the time. Three trail cameras I purchased for my life, security equipment and whatnot missing. So that showed me somebody was pilfering. I also found a lot of things broken, which wasn't fair to me, and a lot of precious things that were one of a kind missing. But what I'm talking about is that's on them in front of their life before God, and they are liable to the Lord for everything they've done. But when we get back to the premise of being successful in America, successful around the world, we have to regard the fact that people coming into America often don't make America better. They make America worse because America has a reputation of being a place for the making and the taking of people. And that's just a blatant lie that they get from Hollywood film that is transferred overseas. They get immoral concepts of what America's life like. They get guttural language which is not right in the real world of business in America and openly they get unprofessional conduct all the time. We also get an attitude of Hondurans and Mexicans and other people that walk across the border illegally that because they got here illegally that they can stay here illegally, they can do things illegally and that's just not right. 
underneath the guise of our Constitution, we all have rights. And we have rights with our birthright. And we have people coming here from foreign lands wanting to take our rights from us. And take our birth certificates and take our birthrights. We even have bastards of Satan in the law enforcement networks that want to say, Are you a sovereign citizen? And you just want to stand up and pop them one. But in the situations you're in, you can't. And it just pisses men off who are educated and influential in their own right. Most of them can't string a sentence together in an inappropriate way with any business person of any significance, and that is openly truthful and untruthful to a point. The life of you is based on what you do and what you say. The life of you is based on how you choose to play. The life of you is totally based on with whom you stay, and the life of you is absolutely, fully, relationally based on who with whom you lay. So if you're not pleased with the direction of your life, first look to your life and whether or not you're believing in a Lord who can help you to move yourself forward in a way you need. When I was in my area of struggle after year 19 in a relationship that was right for me at the time but wrong for me as I saw my future, sadly, and wrong for her possibly, I started to pray. And God answered that prayer within the next week. And in walk trouble. And openly I'm in love with that trouble. But the reality is in life that I've waited a long time for that trouble to be right for me. In life we can tell our life story. We can encourage you to look at your own life and say, If you're not living for God's glory, that's on your life. And you will be liable to the Lord for it. Whether you believe in God or not. Whether you're an atheist. Whether you're an agnostic. Or whether you're a practicing allegedly Christian. Which is you show up on Sunday. But a true person of faith submits their concerns, their woes, their worries to God, no matter what their preferences are, and openly they work hard not to poop and piss on somebody else's life in a way that causes an impact of negative significance. Because that just monkeys your whole life. And it shows that you never grew up, it shows that you never understood the rules of God, and never understood the rules of the world. That you don't get anywhere being a force of one, ruining people's lives. You don't get anywhere. Now, we might have the Trumpsters of the world who are millionaires, billionaires, and really didn't need the paltry salary of a president, but here's the deal. He still made it there by marketing himself through that stupid show uh, when he kept saying you're fired in, and I can't remember, The Apprentice, that went on for many seasons, and that was the best marketing tool he could have for his run for president. It got every household in America to know who he was.